Dear brethren, it is uh, with a great delight that we have here with us um, the representative of canvassing from the North Union, the pastor Antonio de Blan. And he will uh, present to us a topic of a great importance, messengers of hope. Let us hear him with all attention possible. Amen. Dear brethren, dear friends, it is with a great joy in my heart that I address you in this moment. Uh, having participated uh, during this weekend, talking about uh, canvassing, something, um, a topic very important um, and uh, very updated for the times that we are living. And talking about canvassing is like talking about a topic that has to do with each and every one of us. It's a very engaging um, message that talks about our great responsibility. And right now, uh, we are going to talk about messengers of hope. We live in a time in which the advertisement of messages, uh, of uh, fake messages or um, lies, messages as such, which lately have become an obstacle in the lives of many people, and they even received um, a certain name called fake news. Thus, we live in the time of fake news. And these fake news have multiplied day by day because of the um, easy access or the wide access um, that we have with social media and internet. So these uh, lies or these fake news, perhaps we don't... Uh, think so much about the trap or the obstacles uh, that these fake news bring along. But um, in the time of Alexander the Great or Darius became very known an expression called kill the messenger. What, what is this? Well, basically, uh, in the ancient times, there was this custom of killing the messenger that would bring the news of a defeat, the, the news of a loss. So this messenger, he would be killed. Perhaps this was an idea of uh, thus reducing the wrath of gods, uh, of, the, of their gods because of their failure. So uh, let us read um, in Isaiah 52, Verse 7, let us see what the Word of God says. How beautiful on the mountain are the feet of him that brings good tidings, that publishes peace, that brings good tidings of good, that publishes salvation, that said to Zion, your God reigns. How beautiful. In the same manner, or, or uh, in the same manner that uh, a messenger that would publish or will bring uh, the the news of a defeat, likewise another messenger that would bring the news of a victory, he would be received with uh, great acclamation. With he would he would be received in a very good way. And Isaiah. Uh, describes here how beautiful it is. It, it seems like he was imagining uh, this messenger running through the mountain, to the mountains, through the battlefield, and reaching the city in order for him to bring the good news. And that's why Isaiah says, "How beautiful it is to." to receive this kind of a news, to see the one that will bring this news. And the next Bible verse says, Your watchmen shall lift up the voice. With a voice together shall they sing, for they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring again Zion. 
Actually, when, when a messenger will travel long distance to bring forth this news, his feet, at the end of this journey, would, would be rather hurt because of the long distance, because of running barefoot. Dear brethren, the text, this Bible verse is impressing because it says, listen to the watchman. Watchman is a synonym of, of messenger. And the messenger had this huge responsibility of passing this message as fast as possible. A very decided, a very true and a very clear message. And, and when we talk about this, we are referring to an age in which the postal services were not as today, you know, like we today with a click, you know, a message travels around the globe in a, in a few seconds. But in that time, the messenger had to be like fast people, feed people that would travel these long distances and publish or, or bring this good news or, or, or bad news. Dear friends, um, the inspiration of the spirit of prophecy says, let's, let's see what the inspiration says. The time has come when a large work should be done by the canvassers. The world is asleep, and as watchmen, they are to ring the warning bell, to awake the sleepers to their dangers. The churches know not the time of their visitation. Often, they can best learn the truth through the efforts of the canvasser. Those who go forth in the name of the Lord are his messengers to give to the multitudes who are in darkness and error the glad tidings of salvation through Christ in obeying the law of God. Dear brethren, the canvassers, they are the messengers of today. They are the watchmen of our present day. They go forth running. And they go often from one side of a city to another, from one side of a, of, of a state to another, from one country to another, to preach the good news through the edited, uh, through the published uh, literature. And, and the text of Isaiah talks about these messengers of the last days. How beautiful it is to see such an attitude. Dear brethren, in, in reality, the, the canvassing has a story, a very beautiful story. And what calls the most my attention is that in the 12th century, a very successful um, merchandiser, or let's say a very successful businessman in Lyon, in France, uh, he was successful, he was rich, but there was something that he didn't have, which was the peace of mind, which was the peace with God, which was a, 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 um, a light conscience, a very peaceful conscience. And because of this anguish, because of this mental anguish, he visited certain clerics, and one of them gave him a good uh, tip. And this cleric uh, said to Pedro, his name was uh, Pedro Valdo, and he said to him, Pedro, you need to read the Bible. And because he already tried everything, he accepted this tip. And he started reading this, uh, he started reading the Bible. And as he was reading, he, little by little, he would achieve, he would discover that peace of mind, something that he was not accustomed with before, something that he craved for so long before this. And he would read verses such as, uh, you know, the, the chapter 11 or 12 of Peter, come to me, all ye that are um, burdened and heavy laden. And all these Bible verses to Pedro was like a bomb, like a comfort. And because of this, uh, because of his success, because of the peace which finally he achieved, he took a decision which for that time was rather strange. He 
divided all his goods and then he decided to um, use all his goods, all his material goods, all his riches to uh, publish these Bible verses. Um, he, he, he would uh, deliver, he will publish, he will share this, the pieces of the Bible with other people. And Pedro Alvo was, uh, Valdo became very successful in this, and he was so successful that many people decided to follow him. And these people that decided to follow him, uh, we know them today, today called as um, Valdenses. And the Valdenses of that day are the canvases of today. And how many Valdenses or how many canvases have brought forth or have delivered peace and joy and most of all the word of God to um, homes and to people that perhaps had many things in terms of material um, uh, things, but they didn't have the peace of mind. They didn't have the comfort that only the word of God could bring. And thus the canvassers day by day, bringing forth or delivering this message, um, the, the word of God says, the spirit of prophecy says, the Lord calls upon our youth to labor as canvassers and evangelists, to do house-to-house -house work in places that have not yet heard the truth. He speaks to our young men, saying, ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Those who will go forth to the work under God's direction will be wonderfully blessed. Those who in this life do their best will obtain a fitness for the future immortal life. Dear brethren, God is challenging our youth, challenging me, challenging you, especially now in our present time. There are so many things that we see and we hear which are nothing less than the signs before the second coming of Christ. And we have the holy mission, the mission which belonged to the watchmen of the past, the messengers of the past, to bring forth this good news so that the people may wake up and make a commitment towards God. And the spirit, spirit of prophecies continues saying, a great important work is before us. The enemy of souls realizes this, and he is using every means in his power to lead the canvasser to take up some other line of work. This order of things should be changed. God calls the canvassers back to their work. He calls for volunteers who will put all their energies and enlightenment into the work, helping wherever there is an opportunity. The Master calls for everyone to do the part given him according to his ability. Who will respond to the call? God is searching for messengers because the end is very near. God is looking for messengers of hope because messengers of error, messengers of lie, messengers of disappointment, they are very awake and they are planting this fake news everywhere. And we must be planting the word of God, the message, the present time message. Dear brethren, hearing these messages over this weekend and the experiences, it came back to my mind a phase of my life in which I was working as a salesman um, of a funeral service. In other words, I was selling coffins for um, the, the part of um, funeral um, service. And I remember um, one, one time, or most of the times actually, I, I would have to go round and round and, you know, I wouldn't be able to go straight to the point when doing my pitch because, you know, because of the nature of the things that I was selling. So, you know, I would have to go around. 
And many people, when they will start to notice that I would talk about death, I would start talking about coughings, they would, you know, they, they would leave. And this would make, would leave me, you know, rather disappointed, uh, rather sad, because no one would like to hear about my message. No one would like to hear about coffins and death. But dear brethren, I'd like to confess that being a messengers of hope, the story, the context is, is totally different. How many times someone comes to us and says, you were like an angel of light in my life. How many times a canvasser hears from people that uh, you, you, you were sent by God. This is very beautiful. This is very good. And this is what God is looking for. This is what God wants that we go out publishing this truth. The truth which is a reality for our time. And, and talking exactly on this verse that we just read from Isaiah, uh, Apostle um, Paul says in Romans 10, 13 to 15, for who, whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of grace, the gospel of peace, and bring glad tidings of good things. How beautiful. How engaging, how interesting. Think about it. A whole village, a whole city waiting for the messengers to come and bring them the news of how, what, what the situation is in the world. And think about it. He, he, he went all this distance. The messengers ran barefooted along all this distance. And he comes and says to the people, we came victorious. How beautiful. The canvassers do this. They do this from village to village, from city to city, from, from country to country. They bring forth, they deliver, they bring the good news of the gospel. And this word that Apostle Paul is using, preach, means publish, means announce. And this is what we have to do today. And we have to keep in our mind that our efforts won't be in vain. And very differently from my experience when I was selling coffins, and people would, you know, leave hearing me do the pitch because they wouldn't want to hear about death. How differently is when a messenger, a, a canvasser brings for this message and they are received so well by the people. And the Word of God says that the Word of God never comes back or never returns empty. And the spirit of prophecies continues saying, the redeemed will meet and recognize those whose attention they have directed to the uplifted Savior. What blessed converse they will have with these souls. I was a sinner, it will be said without God and without hope in the world. And you came to me and drew my attention to the precious Savior as my only hope. What rejoicing there will be as these redeemed ones meet and greet those who have had a burden in their behalf. What a joy! What a beautiful gathering! Look, it was through your efforts. You, you went out from your home and you went all the way to where I was. Dear brethren, before this affirmation, what is our duty? We must go out till there is a day. Because there will come a night when no one will be able to work. Or we could say, no one will be able to do canvassing. 
We must go for today, because how many people are without health? Or, or they are being lied, they are being tired of chemicals. And We must go from home to home, bringing forth the good news of health. Through these good book, through these good books, where we find in very uh, much detail how to prepare, how to how to do the treatments, because there are many people that have money, have everything materially speaking, but they don't have the peace of mind. They don't have Jesus in their heart. Let's make the most of this opportunity. Let's start with our neighborhood. The people around us, perhaps these books, they have a very little, we, we can purchase them for a very small value, uh, money-wise, or perhaps we receive them and for free, and we can visit our neighbors in our neighborhood, our friends, our relatives. Let us, let us offer this literature, or depending on the on the, on the situation, we can even buy them for a very small price and, and share it with, with other people. Perhaps for you, it's not such a new thing, all these books that we are, we are showing you here. Uh, perhaps you, you know them head from head, and for, for you it is not so important, but for those people, maybe something that will transform their lives. And this is our responsibility. We were given this duty. God chose you. God didn't choose the angels. Because the angels, no angel had to be saved. No angel had to be restored. No angel had to be recovered, regenerated. No, only us, which one day we experience the saving grace. Therefore, my dear brother, dear listener, let us be messengers of hope, messengers of grace, messengers of salvation, because the enemy is, being, is doing a very good job in being a messengers of death. And we were saved by God so that by us and through us, God may be able to save other people. Let us do this till there is a day. And when Jesus will return, he will say, good servant, good faithful servant, come. And there, by God's grace, we will be able to see the fruits of our labor. My prayer is that we may be able to do this work today and the second coming of Christ must be, might be shortened. Amen. Lord, our Father in God, we come before you to thank you for the many blessings in between many others, the assurance of the salvation to Christ. We like to thank you that we were resurrected and we were recovered through your goodness and through your mercies. And we have the certainty that our redeeming is near. We would like to ask you for the time that we are living, that we may be able to plant the word that we may surrender ourselves to you and be used as sowers of hope, as tools and sowers of the eternal life through the literature that talks of your great love. Please be with all your children that are watching this program. We want to ask you for the brave canvases, that you may bless their efforts we would like to ask for all of them that have received some sort of literature. Through your grace, we pray that they may also take a position and a stand on your side. Give us your grace, Lord, that in these last moments of this world, our lives may totally be surrendered to you. And this department of canvassing may be used to take your word
to places that haven't yet received it. Be with all the canvassers, the directors of canvassing, and all of them that have have entered in this line of work. Give us the assurance that our salvation in, is near and that we may cooperate with you in the preparation for the eternal life. Thus we ask you in the name and the merits of Jesus. Amen.